King Carter, King Carter, King Carter, I fly. King Carter, King Carter. So as the monster, you're trying to wipe out the team of the four hunters. He meets up with a team of hunters early on, and he doesn't get his parts, or he's going to get back. Early on, you want to avoid the hunters for as long as possible. And while you're doing that, you're eating it. You're eating it getting more fire. The more you eat, the more sort of energy you get, and the more energy you get, the sooner you get to get all into a bigger, more powerful creature. Eventually, what you'd like to do is get the big enough, strong enough that you can turn your tables and you can become the hunter and go after the humans. That's what really intriguing things about playing Evolve in general is it's this four versus one cross battle. You really don't know what humans want to do. Evolve really provides a competitive experience that you're not going to find anywhere else. There's a lot of multiplayer shoots out there, but this really is a genuinely different team. You get to be a giant monster. You don't want to be a giant monster and smash and beat and shred and kill. I think it's that unique sort of experience of playing in these cooperative and cooperative games that really makes it stand on its own and sort of experience it as well. It's fast, it's tactical, it's a very, very, very good experience. Actually caught up with him. He is being pursued and he is using the point which is the best of the out of the way um, paths in this song. Yeah, it looks like we're going to be long and the rest of the pack, and that's it's a pretty common tactic for the hunters to use where the rest of the team will the monster out and they will be trapped in the middle of the arena. So it's a risky move, but a lot of times it pays off so they can't really stay in this It looks like though Goliath knows what's going on. And yeah, you can see if you see the red. That's what it is. That's probably where that's going to be the trap. Oh, this creates such a big opportunity for Goliath. He's got a beat on him, and he doesn't know it. Oh, he's in trouble and pounced on immediately. And this is one of those risks you run. And it's trying to throw up all the mechanics here in, uh, in Evolve. The fact that as one, you're just not powerful enough to deal with it. As four, though, at this stage especially, you can't go to town. He's incapacitated and not dead, firing his pistol, and trying to get him back up as quickly as he can now. As we see the live begin to fight, I mean, is this a fight he really wants to take, or is he just trying to do some damage and eventually create some speed? I think, you know, when you have three down, down, you have an ability there. Anytime you get one guy down, the fight's going to be over, but they picked the back up. So at this point, if I was alive, I'd start looking for an opportunity. And I don't know, you kind of see how well you're going to your offense is going, and if it's not going well, you, you, you tend to try to get out. We can see he is taking a lot of damage, and now that all four are up, we can see all of their abilities being in the same team. Shielding and the other one back from the medic shield coming from. This is important to see. Um, 
our traffic is getting more and more involved. He's getting very good hard to lose his own food, borderline and mobilizing on that. And he has to deal with those three years. He's going to force our assault class up front, close and personal, and wants to take the damage and wants to deal as much damage as he can. But it does look like this bike might be winding down. You know, they just got a big on Yeah, he's going to try to get away now. He got tagged by the next train last time. He's going to be able to still get away, but you can see those few steps he takes between lifts. He's so slow. He has worn off now. But there's just so many skill shots. And oh, look at the support. Got caught out by one of those native plants on the map. And as we see the live, try to find some space and something else. And talk to me about the design of the map itself and, and why it plays such a role in such a competitive game. Well, we wanted him to really be another player in the game. And in a sense, the environment is a third player in the, between the AI and the environment, the carnivorous plants. These things could be opportunities. I and mean, we can see that carnivorous plan has given them a live flight advantage and allowed them to create some space. They had to bust them out and slow them down. And now he's going to break two. He's leveling up to uh, stage two in his evolution. Oh, he's got such a good high ground position coming from downtown with a big smash. And that's going to send them scattering. Now it looks like he doesn't want to fight. Just wanted to do what damage he could to throw them off base, to get them confused. But we see our trappers right behind him, helping to slow him down, hitting those harpoons. Let's see if he can catch up with it. Yep, he's got the mobile arena ready to go. Going to try to toss that out in front of him. Hit him with the harpoon. There it goes. He's let it go. And the leap, not enough. Harpooned him from behind, and now he's trapped. Now, this is one of the biggest gameplay mechanics as well. That mobile arena. Talk to me about what that means for both the live player and for the hunter. For the Goliath, that means he's trapped in there for a certain amount of time. For the hunter, it's an opportunity for them to cheat and smarter and to do something. Oh, we can see, oh, the trapper actually got knocked in the river. Now, I know there's a tyrant. Yes, the tyrant down in the river. You have to be so aware of your surroundings in a ball if you're one of the hunters. As he's, that's actually a one-shot. He's, and he's not just down to make a pass it to you. There's no resuscitating him. That's going to be two minutes he's off the map entirely. As Goliath continues to just run over the rest of his team. What kind of, I mean, put it in context. How big of a loss is it whenever you lose one of your teammates like that as the hunter? It's huge. They're designed to be co-op. Each one of them has a, a, a very specific function that is vital to their success. So as soon as one guy's out, uh, they're at a huge disadvantage. And we can see the lies actually running here. And since they're down a man, how does that change their strategy and how they can approach the line? Well, the death of one is more cautious. The lie approach is like that. He, he, he might be able to call out right here. Uh, so they need a little bit more defensive. Uh, uh, I'm not going to chase them. Uh, I'm a self, I'm a self they healer they as well. Right? But they want to, they want to not really force the fight themselves. They want to wait till you're back. They want to take that big of a risk. Now the problem is, we saw they had to stop and deal with that time. his number one priority right now as the hunter just right waiting on the traffic to get back on the map. But, you know, now that they know that he's coming back in, we see already the minds being laid. Talk to me about the strategy we're seeing in front of the hunters right now. So they're really just trying to turn a lot of the ball. They're trying to wait. Griffin's got 30 seconds to come in. So all they're trying to do is last that 30 seconds before Griffin's going back. Another big smash, but uh, he's able to corner two of them. Now 20 seconds right now, it seems like such a short amount of time. But just look at how much damage the Goliath is doing as they're waiting for him to come back in and lacking that immobilization means they can't kind of effect him. That's why he's able to charge on top of them, why he's able to bang them down so damn hard. And yet we're going to see already the medic is down. Nice play from the support though, using the first stealth ability that's his classic ability. Bought some time for everyone to kind of reset, but they're still hurting. In the meantime though, the trapper is just about to finish him down. The fight's raging on. He's talking to me how they're going to try to change this up. Now we're going back to fish. They're just waiting for Griffin to get back in. Um, Assault's going to try to draw his attention. That's the line right now. It's not a damage, so they'll try to draw the aggro and the personal shield to negate that a little bit. And, oh, we're actually going to see another incapacitation on the support. Losing the support is just crippling. You, know, you don't have the orbital strike that you can call in. You don't have the personal shielding. This is going to happen when you don't have that. However, with the trapper back in, it's going to give him a chance to maybe kind of it so far and no good harpoons. He's just continuing to deal massive amounts of damage and run over this team who is once again running at three-quarter strength. We're going to see, yep, potentially another incapacitation. 
but uh, he's setting up. He's landing another smash, and yep, there we go. Once down, that's going to be the medic and the Goliath just continuing to hell the way, setting up a huge assault on the no. Oh, you jerks! Cutting the feet at the very last minute. That's uh, that's not fair, man. Yeah, so much 
I'm right on top of him, guys. I'm right on top of him. Hey, he's running. Hold up. No, he's still here. Alright, I'm, I'm launching. I'm launching a UAV just in case. Yerp, this is Siri. Thank you for watching and be sure to like this video. For more videos from this particular mode, click more videos. If you want to see more content from IKC, click subscribe. Oh, and don't forget to follow IKC on Twitter and to like his Facebook page. This is Siri signing out. Peace.